You're listening to How I Sell, a podcast built for early career sales professionals. You'll hear stories, best practices, and guidance from top sales leaders on what it takes to become a sales superstar. Today's episode is made possible by Ramped Careers. Ramped is on a mission to build the next generation of workforce-ready talent. Hey everyone, joining us today is Karen Wen. VP of Sales at Cobalt.io. Prior to joining Cobalt, Karen was a sales leader at Upwork, the world's largest talent marketplace. She's been recognized as one of the top 25 women leaders in cybersecurity. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to uh, have a chat with you guys today. Yeah, nice Uh, to be with you. Yeah, nice to see you as well, Danny. Karen, uh, for, for those that may not know, may not know you, who was Karen when? (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, so it's, it's always the simplest that is the hardest to, to answer, right? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm currently the VP of sales for Cobalt.io, which is the, uh, the pen test as a service uh, company. We actually innovate upon the, the, the antiquated uh, pen testing experience uh, for businesses by introducing a technology platform, uh, as well as utilizing freelancers uh, from all over the world. Uh, so uh, I've been with the company for about two years now. And looking back at, at my career, I've always been in sales. So, you know, that's the professional side of me. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if you want to get into the personal <laughs> side. Uh, again, it's, uh, you know, been always been in sales and currently managing the team here at Cobalt. We're at about uh, 30 salespeople today. Nice, nice, nice. That's awesome. Big team. Uh, and, and like us, you graduated around the time of the last economic downturn. So yeah. kind of hard in all of us. Did you see yourself in sales back then? Or how did you end up at Verizon? Yeah, no, that's an excellent question. Uh, I think, you know, nobody kind of uh, went to college to be uh, in sales, right? And so uh, for my sales career, um, very similar to everybody who graduated at the time, which is mainly looking for ways to pay bills. Uh, And so I kind of stumbled upon uh, my career at uh, Verizon um, because, again, we're all just looking for ways to to pay our bills and get out out of our parents' basement, essentially, right? So, uh, you know, I uh, went over to Verizon to pay a bill and they had a uh, now hiring sign, essentially went back home, put on my interview uh, suit and got my resume printed and went right back in line. Uh, And I was hired actually on the spot. Uh, So I did uh, work for them for about four years in various different positions from uh, customer service to sales to sales management. And when I left uh, at Verizon, I was uh, a retail sales uh, management for them. Uh, It was actually around uh, Christmas time and I had that day off. The alarm went off at my retail store, uh, (laughs) went in there and apparently somebody had broken into it and it was, it was the holidays, but I had to actually do physical inventory to figure out, you know, and filing police report. Right after that, I had the same passion that I did when I got the job. I said, I'm going to put on my suits and go out there and looking for something different because I cannot do retail. I have mad respect for folks that are in retail sales, by the way. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So anyways, that was kind of my first uh, stab in sales. Um, but uh, after, right after that, uh, a friend of mine who was working for a company called Elance, a startup um, he said, you know, we're looking for a salesperson. Why don't, why don't you uh, come in and interview? Uh, so I did. And uh, I uh, was there for seven years, actually. And when I left that, that company, I essentially led one of their biggest business units uh, to go join Cobalt. Awesome. Crazy cool career arc. And clearly, you know, a lot of, a lot of fun and excitement along the way, uh, mm-hmm. especially in the early days. So if you look back, how, how have you architect your sales career or, or, or was it prescriptive or, or was it somewhat of a, a, a journey that you didn't really anticipate? You know, I, I don't think it was prescribed. Um, I don't think anybody go into a sales career would tell you that there is a prescription in terms of, you know, how you, how you get to 
uh, a VP level or even beyond that. Um, and so for me, it was, um, I, I actually took every single step of the sales career ladder, essentially. And I, I, I shared with you guys the story about my retail, but the startup environment was the same. When I joined, I was the first uh, of three salespeople and I was actually uh, a BDR, uh, which is a business development rep. And essentially what you do is the grind of sales, right? You, uh, you make a lot of phone calls, you do a lot of prospecting, you do a lot of cold calling, you do a lot of uh, account mapping, and essentially, it's just so that somebody can take a meeting with with you or with uh, with an AE that you booked the meeting for. So uh, the the good news was when I joined the startup and kind of had this exposure into the, the software sales world, it was me and two others. And the two others are a director of sales and a VP of sales. And everybody was all hands on deck just because it, you know, it was a startup environment. So I was lucky in a way that I was exposed uh, to the decision-making process. I was exposed to the different challenges not not only in sales but in other departments and so you know every time we acquire a new customer it's a new process that then you would have to learn whether it's legal or how did we actually market it to them why did we win what's the value proposition how did we, what's our margin from a finance perspective after we pay out all of your guys commissions and everything else and so uh, getting having those exposures actually allowing me to kind of broaden my my understanding understanding of the role itself. Uh, and you, you kind of naturally have more empathy for other parts of the business, right? If you join sales in a large organization, most likely you're only going to know your world, right? And so there's a lot of just me versus us. Um, and um, yeah, so I think, you know, starting there and having that exposure early on, uh, kind of gave me empathies for other types of departments and what they do and slowly kind of see myself in the different um, processes. And that's how I kind of grew my career uh, from that uh, into an AE. And again, wearing that, uh, having that on my um, uh, on my conscience of like, okay, what I'm doing is impacting others. That helps me kind of um, uh, grow uh, into um, the role that I am today. That's amazing. And, and you've worked at companies of different sizes, right? And Verizon is a, is a very large organization uh, yeah. you know, on the retail side or the commercial side. And then you went to Correct. a startup, mm -hmm. uh, stuck along with Upwork, which also got really large. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what would you say was your kind of fondest experience selling? Do you have a memory or two memories or a story that you fondly recollect and say, well, that was the you know, so far, the epitome of your sales career. I'm hopeful that you'll have a thousand more of those. But up until today, uh, do you have a pleasant sales memory? You know, that they, they were all actually very pleasant. Uh, I think, you know, if, if, if I'm thinking about when I was selling, uh, the most uh, pleasant that came to mind was I, I remember we were doing uh, and all hands and our VP of sales actually at the time he kind of stood up and say hey he these are some of the logos that uh, we have acquired in the last month and he popped up uh, the logo and he said oh this is like the, the company this is who sold it and this is the next uh, logo and who sold it and after he actually listed all six of them he he said actually they're all from Karen. Uh, so that from a, from a salesperson, you know, at that time, it was like very early on in my career. And so having that and after the all hands, everybody kind of came up to me and said, oh, wow, that, that must felt nice. And it did. And actually, that is one of the reasons why I've kind of stuck with sales as well. Right. We uh, salespeople are cut from a very different cloth. Uh, you know, we we love the rewards, we love the recognition, we love the competition. And so uh, as uh, you get more and more of those, it builds your confidence. In sales, it's all about confidence. Like it doesn't matter who you're selling to, if you're not confident, it's not going to go. And so those motivations, are, it was what built kind of my confidence in saying, you know, I think I kind of got this figured out. So this is like way early on in my career. Um, um, I would say, you know, later on uh, is more about just scaling the team 
and so you know we got uh, Upwork as an example got to a point where they were right about to go public and we went from five six seven eight you know hiring very incrementally uh, to like overnight I got 30 people on my sales team and um, you know, it, it, it was a nice feeling to, to uh, give uh, opportunities to, to others. Uh, so I would say those uh, continue to be, you know, highlights of, of my career. That's, that's amazing. Um, so, so you're saying there were six logos that your, your boss thought were critical for the business and you scored all of them. <laughs> how did you do it? Uh, I'm sure everyone else asks you the same question. I mean, I, I'd want to know, uh, how, how did you make it happen? How do I make it happen? Um, you know, it, it's sales is uh, you get out of it just about as much as you put into it, right? And it's all like um, a math uh, equation at the end of the day. Uh, so there's everybody has a conversion rate. If you're very convincing, if you're very uh, persuasive, and if you're you're good at what you do, you can you you convert a little bit higher. Uh, and, you know, and so it's about how many people do you talk to? And it's about the, the, the effort that you put into it. And so if you're converting, uh, you have to kind of know what your conversion level is as an individual, and uh, you just do the math. Um, your quota at the end of the month is the same thing. So how many people are you talking to? What's your personal conversion rate? What's the average sales price that you're, you're selling at, right? So it's not a secret. Um, I think, and then if you want to know the secret of it all, it's like, you know, people buy from people they like. Um, I practice a lot of empathy, um, personally and professionally. And if you, if you look at somebody in front of you, ask the question of like, what are their constraints? What do they care about? Uh, and if you map those together and you also match the effort, um, I, I don't think you can lose. Um, again, uh, constraints can be budget. It could be timeline. It could be their boss is at their neck for something. You have to be able to figure all of those out. Um, and when you practice empathy, you know, for the person in front of you, again, regardless if it's like, you know, uh, a customer or a colleague or a friend, if you practice that, I, I don't think you, um, you can lose. That's yeah, I, really well, I, well said. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I love that answer as well. I think it's, um, it's, it's really good and it, it, it's really scientific sales, right? You're, it's all part of an equation. You're putting yeah. pieces together and keep sales simple and, and easy. And then you have your win. It, it really is just, it, it boils down to that. Sales can be very simple if you just focus on the metrics and focus yes. on saying the right things at the right time. Yeah. Um, but I do have a question on that is, have you ever run into anything unexpected? And if so, what in your career in sales? Unexpected. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, if, you, if you're if you asking for like just uh, challenges that I, I see, um, for me personally, I mean, there's always like unexpected things. For example, this whole COVID situation, nobody actually anticipated this. And, um, you know, and, and you just have to be able to uh, pivot quickly, uh, you know, managing a, a team in person is a lot different than man managing a team uh, remotely. And so we all kind of have to make that pivot. Uh, pivot. Um, personal challenges. Um, I think, you know, I don't... <laughs> Uh, maybe we can edit this later, <laughs> but uh, for, for I, I've had experience where um, before you even start talking, uh, people actually question your uh, knowledge just because mm. of uh, I, you know. I don't know if you guys can relate, uh, but you you both look very young to me. And maybe I am not going to ask you how old you guys are. However, I've had experiences where um, I was asked if I um, know my stuff, right? Uh, or, or, you know, let's talk to somebody who is not uh, so young uh, and I need somebody a little more experienced to talk to me. So I've actually have had those uh, in my career. Um, 
And um, you, when you run into those kind of things, uh, people are entitled to, to their opinion. Um, and what you can control is the outcome of that uh, comment or that conversation, right? So um, almost 100% of the time when I receive those comments, uh, the outcome of it is they all felt um, uh, apologetic for their initial comment. And so you can, you can only control what you can control. Uh, so uh, I, I, I always um, am aware of that um, situation. I, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, frankly, I, I can I can empathize there too. I so I worked at Groupon back in the day, and I was as yeah, twenty two back then. I'm now thirty four, but uh, I've always looked a little bit younger than I was. And and someone uh, mistook me for an eighteen year old while on a sales call in <laughs> Oklahoma City, like an in person sales visit, and they kicked me right out of their they kicked me out of their store, and I was like, oh my god. Uh, and I, I think I was the type that actually benefited from being on the phone because you couldn't see how young I looked. And uh, <laughs> when I would cold call, uh, I'd have a different result than, than going in person up until like a few years later when I when I really knew my stuff on Groupon and, and turned the corner there. But yeah, I, I, I can totally see it. It's it's uh, it is a thing. And I, I don't know what you call that, like a, ageism. I, I don't know what it is, but. <laughs> But, uh, but it, it's happened to me for sure. <laughs> it's it's a blessing and a curse. And I'm like, you yeah. know, looking at me, uh, you can, I, I would say thank you if you think I'm 18. That's yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah. But obviously I'm not. And uh, I cannot, you are entitled to your opinion. And what I can do is I can control the conversation. Right. And uh, I can prove to you that I know what I'm talking about. And that's the only thing that, you know, that that matters. Right. So I, uh, I, I have had those experience uh, previously. And again, for everybody else out there, you know, you cannot control what people say. You can only control your own uh, actions. And uh, I, I better myself for that. I, you know, um, I, I read a few more books for that. <laughs> I read a few more news articles just for that, right? So you can only control what you can control. Yep. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly right. Uh, so so looking at your career overall, what type of salesperson would you say you are? You know, at, at a high level, and then what are some of your sales philosophies? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe maybe I can start with the philosophy uh, first, and we can. Kind of, uh, you guys can can distill down to who who you think I am as a salesperson. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think again, like I said, the salespeople we are cut from different cloth. We love rewards. We love the autonomy. We love the recognition, um, and we love 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 the competition. And my philosophy as a sales leader and as a salesperson, I think sales is a sport. And uh, it's a sport team, right? When you're on a team, uh, everybody must do their part in order to win championships. And what that means is I hold myself to a higher level of accountability and I hold my teammates to even a greater level of accountability. Uh, and I think practice makes perfect. Uh, I think that you must constantly try to learn and improve. Uh, one of the core values here at Cobalt is humble learning. Uh, as a company, we practice this and I practice this myself. Um, very much like, like I said, if you feel like, you know, somebody's going to look at you a certain way, go read another book. If you are, you know, go read a few more articles, go and sharpen up your skill sets. And um, you must have that mentality. Uh, what made you successful? up until this point will not make you successful in the future. So you kind of have to always constantly try different things. Uh, so for example, you know, this whole COVID situation, right? Your, uh, the, the, the office or the, the going out to see people, that relationship building aspect is no longer there. So now what do you do if you're a relationship builder now what do you do? Um, you know, so you have to constantly learn uh, and pivot and, and be open to that mindset that you can always learn from everybody. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, that's, that's my philosophy. And I think that's who I am as a salesperson as well. It's very, uh, it's very inward looking. It's, you know, I think in, in many ways, it's, it's a, it's a great perspective to have. Uh, and I think you're a lot more forgiving than, than I am because, 
I think so. Certain opinions people are not entitled to have uh, <laughs> judging <laughs> ju ju judging someone based on the way they look or you know based on their gender. Uh, you know that's honestly not an, an opinion. But I don't think it's a necessarily a healthy way of looking. I think it's you know it's just me being maybe a little less a uh, little less tolerant and a little quick to react. But at the end of the day, I think your perspective is is really nice, really refreshing. Um, and, you know, it looks like you're, you're always up for learning, um, always mm -hmm. up for picking up a new set of skills. Do you, do you think that there is a, there is some type of specialization that comes into play uh, within sales? For example, today you see a lot of tech, you see a lot of products and, and, and services being extremely sophisticated. Uh, do you think a salesperson that's good at sales can sell, can sell anything? Or do you see a world where you'll have sellers that know how to sell you know, to the office of the CFO and you have sellers that know how to sell, you know, to like IT, IT leaders. I mean, you, yeah. you sell a technical product and pen testing is not something that everyone's aware of. What's mm -hmm. your take on it? How do you think it's going to shape up? You know, I, I think the, the fundamental of sales is actually the same across um, all industry. Meaning, you know, what I said to you guys earlier, every buyer has um, constraints, every buyer has a problem that they're trying to solve. Um, understanding what the problem is that they're trying to solve or their pain points or things will take a little bit more after or specialization after you get in. Um, however, the basics of like, let's be empathetic to those concerns. Let's ask the right questions. Um, let, let us all position it, uh, you know, so it's uh, those fundamentals don't change. Um, and uh, so, I mean, you, you take my experience, I've never sold pen testing before. I've never, you know, even heard of the word pen test. I actually giggle the first time I heard pen testing, right? Um, I, I, that's how silly it was. <laughs> But, but it, it, uh, it, it, the fundamentals don't change. And you, what you're looking for is the aptitude for somebody to be able to learn and that curiosity to learn something different or something new. Um, that would kind of shape. And, and I struggle with this all the time when I hire new sales people. I'm like, do I actually hire somebody from the industry or do I give this other uh, who I thought is really good a shot at learning so I always look at if they don't have the industry experience I question the aptitude and so I start poking at that and if they could prove to me that they can learn something quickly then that's not a bad thing it's, it's definitely not a bad thing to have somebody from the outside in uh, to actually uh, see what some of the problems are that maybe we're blinded to it because we've been in it for so long. Uh, that actually is going back to the, the history of Cobalt as well. Uh, all of our founders, four, we have four founders, uh, have never done cybersecurity, but they actually, uh, from a, an, a, uh, an outsider perspective, saw that there's these inefficiencies uh, that maybe somebody who have been doing it for a long time do not see, right? And so we capitalize on that same thought. So I, I would say I give people the same sort of, of, of um, uh, level playing field. Uh, if you don't have it, you, you just show me that you have the aptitude and the curiosity to be able to learn that and learn it quickly. Yeah, it's really smart, really, really smart. And I like the intangible based uh, the, the intangible based way to look at it too. It's not always about, do you have this direct tactical skill set? Uh, yeah. it's, it's something else. And it kind of sparks another question for me is, you know, what's your take on sales education? And I ask because, you know, uh, you answered the last question, but also your, your mix of, uh, you know, your on the job education, your MBA, mm. you know, are there certain majors that you feel like aspiring sales professionals should have, um, you know, when, when, when you get into sales, I'm, I'm curious to know your take on, on that realm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there is a professional, uh, it, well, well, let's just take a, a formal education for sales. Like, uh, I mean, what I'm saying is like, uh, college uh, degrees, um, you might, you know, going into business, business, business administration and see, you know, how the, the sausage making in all the different business areas or entrepreneurships. Um, however, you know, I think um, a high emotional intelligence is something that is very needed in, in sales. Uh, and so uh, 
I don't think that I'm by that I'm saying go get a psychology degree, but、um, it, it 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 actually you know I read the emotional intelligence book. I've I've actually done.、Um, A few、uh, studies on that, you know, as part of my communication、uh, major. But、uh, I think having a, a high level of、uh, emotional intelligence and awareness of your surroundings, of you know, pe- a person in front of you, how they behave, and what their verbal cues are, and understanding that and picking it up quickly so you can pivot. You know, there's there that that is needed. But I I can't say that there's like a.、Um, A degree for that. <laughs> so、um, I've had I've had、uh, AEs who、uh, are have backgrounds in computer science. I have AEs who have backgrounds in economics and communication and philosophy and so all sorts. But I think it kind of boils down to a high level of emotional intelligence. If, if you're talking about,、um, you know, what you need to know. I hope that answers your question, Danny. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I think, I think,、uh, I think you did great there. <laughs> Thanks. One of the,、um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned、uh, that you look for in 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 sales talent, especially the the up and comers, is is aptitude, right? Especially、mm-hmm. if you don't have any experience, then clearly you can't say, "Oh, I know how to sell to," you know, a CTO because you're just out of college. So you look for aptitude. What other characteristics do you look for?、Uh, let's say that I was a, you know. Twenty-something-year-old, or I was a career switcher, and I'm considering a,、mm. you know, an SDR, BDR role. I walk into a room, I interview with you. What are some of the things that you're looking for from me? Yeah,、um, I, I say this a lot. Like the、uh, from a sales management perspective, it's how. How easy is this person for me to manage, right? And and、um, everybody has. Uh, a goal, a target, a quota. If if it's at my, you know, at the VP level too, you also have bosses that are are. And so, I'm. I don't make things difficult for for my team members. And and having that understanding and that awareness, how easy it is are you to lean into that, and being able to make my life easier, <laughs> right? And so,、um, I I think you know, be open. Uh, you know, be a humble learner. You want to be able to lean in. You want to be able to make the lives of your your manage、uh, management team or managers like easier.、Um, you know, I think all of those are 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 excellent to have. And for me, from a、um, a, a startup perspective, how resourceful are you?、Uh, how scrappy are you? Obviously, I don't have a big.、Um, Uh, department to to train salespeople when they come in. I don't have the. I have one person who just recently hired, and she's done a great job. But you know, it's not fully fleshed out. So I'm not going to give be able to give you a certificate of like you now can do everything,、uh, know everything. And so、um, you you need to be scrappy and you need to be resourceful and you need to be、um, motivated. Sales is is a tough. Tough job. You do a lot of the grind, and so if you don't have anything else to motivate you, it's hard. And you know you are not always going to win, and you're not always going to beat every single month because it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. How do you actually pull yourself back and say, you know what? That's that's I missed this month, but I'm going to have that motivation to be better, and I know where I miss, and I'm going to do better.、Uh, and that is continuous, and that's what I look for. Yeah, that's that's really really great, profound, and and helpful to our audience. And a question off that, and then one more question after to to wrap. But when you're when you're looking at new SDRs, you mentioned scrappiness and hunger and、uh, resourcefulness. Like, how how are you screening for that? Is there something our audience can use to say, "Hey, I'm demonstrating, even though I don't have work experience, that I'm a scrappy individual." Yeah. No, no, no. That's a great, great question.、Uh, we, we, we loved to test our BDRs beforehand.、Uh, I also have.、Uh, I have to say that every time somebody LinkedIn messaged me with a a message that I feel like they have put some thoughts into it, would always get a response from me. Always, 
Um, and whether it's like, yeah, you know, I don't need it right now, or I'm not the one to, to deal with this, but I will put you, connect you. I will always respond to somebody who will put in that effort. And so when it comes time to screening our BDRs, I do the same way, right? Like I actually, you know, we would talk to them and we, we would say, this is cobalt, a high level. Now you're going to go and research what we do. And I'm going to actually ask you to guess who our target audience are from a, uh, from a customer prospect. Who are the ideal customer profile do you think Cobalt is selling to? Find me the name, find me the company, and draft me an email that will get their attention. And that's what we always do with our BDRs. Um, we actually do solve too uh, with our, our, our AEs because they do do prospecting as well. Nice. That's very helpful, very tactical. So if you're listening out there, take what Karen is saying to heart. <laughs> She's just told you how to get in touch if you are looking for a job. If I get job. like 20 LinkedIn <laughs> messages tomorrow. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could also endorse that you respond to cold messages because that's exactly what I did. I wrote you a cold message on LinkedIn and I said, hey, could you could you join us on our podcast? So yeah. uh, so I don't know what you're setting yourself up for uh, for here, Karen. I'm, I'm sure your inbox is going to be flooded with uh, <laughs> all kinds of messages. But, but... <laughs> The, on the bright side, I think you may end up getting some very creative cold email sequences from anyone that wants uh, a, a career with Cobalt. Yeah. Perfect. Yep, that's right. Uh, okay, so our, so our last question, uh, if you could go back in time, now that you have the benefit of hindsight, and give yourself one piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? Wow, uh, that's a good one. Um, one piece of advice. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's what I just gave your listeners, right? Uh, it is to to do research, uh, know who you actually are talking to, and people do appreciate now uh, nowadays as well. And even before this, uh, social selling, I think, has always been a thing, uh, especially after LinkedIn. Uh, but um, understanding who you're who you're speaking to, put a little bit of effort and more effort into. Um, understanding that and be creative. Um, uh, that's, that would be my advice. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, well, we truly appreciate your time, Karen. It's been a pleasure. We've learned a ton. Our audience is, is surely going to benefit from all of your tactical guidance. And uh, though your, your inbox may be flooded, like we said, <laughs> they, 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 they will be creative. And, uh, and, and we hope, um, you know, uh, to, to have you back on at some point in the future when your, your sales team has grown significantly and you're, you're ho-humming with tons and tons of, sale, of sellers under you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I, I hope that this is going to be beneficial to, uh, to your listeners as well. And I'm always happy to come back. Just uh, let me know. Thanks. Thank you. Have, Have a good, good one. one. Bye. Bye-bye.